CRTD stock has met our bearish targets almost to the penny. But what does that mean for price action coming up? Well, let's go ahead and find out within this video. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by. Once again, this is Arca coming at you with a CRTD technicals, statistical, and raw price action thread of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community, uh, RCAB, within Discord. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. We are looking at CRTD on the four-hour chart, and as you can see, we have reached our demand zone that we said uh, could be a likely area for us to be able to touch down on. As you can see, I also made, I haven't, by the way, I haven't changed anything within my charts since the last time I've, I've touched this, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on this and just make this, uh, uh, make this trend line. Uh, it, can I actually do that? Uh, I guess I can't. Okay, so we're going to do it actually from right here. We're going to make the trend line all the way across, a horizontal line. So as you can see, um, we suggested it was <laughs> we suggested for us to stop at the at the at the 3 spot 618, which is actually here and we surpassed it just by oh my goodness, just by ever we surpassed it ever so slightly. But yeah, so we actually did touch on this uh, demand zone here. Uh, which we were able to see in a discretionary manner that we were actually starting to face a downside, and we were also in a bearish uh, in a bearish setup. Aside from that, we were also incredibly overbought. Uh, but let's go ahead and now take a look at a couple things. We did mention that the statistical target from our back test, the three spot six one eight, this Fibonacci ratio. Uh, excuse me, and uh, let me go ahead and pull up the simple moving averages. The simple moving average 50-day period and 200-day period were all in confluence with our with our target here. So, and I did mention that whenever we have this much rhyming within within targets, it's you know it's generally going to be fulfilled. So, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next chart now and see what we have. So this is the statistical side of the of the uh, analysis here. I'm sorry that this uh, does take some time to listen to, but it's it's incredibly important for us to be able to know how to be able to navigate the metrics in order for us to understand the behavior and the movement of the asset in which we're trading in. It's not, this, this back test is particular to CRTD, but this, what I'm showing you here is part of my system. This is how I trade. This is how I'm able to, to gain a, a, a successful consistency uh, within, within the entries and exits, okay? So now for the new listeners, we are looking at volatility here, represented by this indicator BBWP. Uh, volatility is direction neutral. We pair it with, in my case, stochastic momentum. We pair it with a momentum type indicator or a momentum based indicator in order for us to gauge a bias for that direction. And what I have noticed is that backtesting just the stochastic momentum in several tickers, I have gained a 75 to 90 percent uh, accuracy in guessing the asset's direction. So it's not perfect, but it's very, very you know, good to consider. Okay, so from uh, from this point here, which is where we had closed this candle, we had, uh, you know, from from the back test, we had measured a minus forty eight spot, thirty uh, six percent decline uh, to the downside, and our our uh, metrics came back with an eighty six spot six six percent accuracy. So I mean. This was this was this was for sure a given. You know what I mean. So uh, during the back test, uh, I was able to take any any time where volatility has reached the ninety percentile, which is which I consider to be anything above this metric here, the red line, uh, and started a contraction phase. The volatility versus momentum profile, uh, I was able to measure the duration of the iteration the downside thrust from the iteration and the amount of times that the iteration was guessed correctly versus incorrectly to the downside in particular. Okay, so that uh, was performed throughout the, throughout the entire trading history of the CRTD asset. As you can see, all these notes, they're actually uh, done by hand so that we can be able to gain more of an accuracy for our trade. Okay, so with, with those... Uh, with that back test, we did gauge these metrics, and now we applied it a few days ago 
to our current price action, and we determined that we were likely to see uh, see a touch of the two spot six one eight Fibonacci ratio at seventy twenty one at seventy cents. Okay, so as you can see, the statistical metric, the closure of the candle is actually is actually right right there. So this is the closure of the candle, and this is the statistical metric here, and I suggested for us to touch down at 2-spot 618. The candle did come back all the way, did wick low here. I'm sorry, the candle did wick low down here to test the SMA 100. Okay, so what I have noticed here is that there is a potential to where the downside may continue temporarily before actually a bounce to the upside. And the reason I can say this is because of the formation in which we have been trading in. This is, let me actually make it a little easier to see. This is a broadening descending wedge. And I talk about the golden rule of three very often within this channel. So that requires three tests of the resistance. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, one and then this one right here, as you can see, is number two. Sorry, it's the, the iteration uh, from the back test is on it. So one, two, three tests. Usually usually right here is an opening for shorts and, and uh, long put plays to be able to bet to the downside. The third test usually presents an enormous accumulation or capitulation to the downside before an actual true breakout on test number four now if you can take a look here we're looking at the daily chart here so if you can look none of these candles have retraced to be able to test our newly converted resistance into support so now this needs to be confirmed into support and as you can see it looks like we're on our path to do that sometimes sometimes and only sometimes it can bypass the playbook or the rules of the, of, of the formation and just retrace a little bit early Okay, but I am looking at I I am looking at a couple things here. I mean, aside from the fact that it's just a massive amount of red candles, it's still a little bearish, meaning that it may actually want to come and test this zone here at around the forty nine cent level before a continuation to the upside. But maybe not because we've already reached you know pretty close. And uh, if we just say if right, so. Actually, I don't even think we'll be able to do this. One, two, three. To modify our uh, uh, to modify our our positioning here, I was thinking that if we did this and met all three tests still, then we could potentially have made that test already. Okay, so. This is very discretionary, you guys. Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm stuttering like this. I just want to make sure that I give you the right answers. I, I want to make sure that that the, the process means more to me than the money. Okay, I, I, I love, I love, absolutely love doing this. So, and like when you turn in a project to a teacher, you're waiting for the next day to see if you got an A or an A or not. You know, this is literally me. I like to, I like to make sure that I can be as precise as I can be. Um, yeah, actually, this may have been the touch. I, I believe that this is actually the touch of the support confirmation, and it is a daily candle. So upon the next day candle, if this closes in this manner, we can look at an upside move. Uh, we may actually just bounce back and forth within the daily candle, but it, it, it's, it actually may be looking pretty bullish right now. Um, uh, yeah, the statistical metric was met to the penny here. Let's go ahead and move on to actually a bias for, for direction. Um, what we're looking at here is the 12 hour RSI. Okay. So now these two drives, uh, are, I put this here for your convenience so you can be able to see what I'm looking at. Okay. So this is a massive two drives of hidden bearish divergence. So it's it, this is the bearish side and this is hidden. It usually happens when the RSI makes a higher high, which is the RSI here making higher highs, and price action making lower highs, which is the price action here making lower highs. And as you can see, we have made that. And to be perfectly clear, it looks like it's already it looks like it's already in play, all right? And also the 12 hour, I mean, this is this is still suggesting some downside. The 12 hour is making me feel like about what I about what I mentioned about us potentially just bouncing right in this area, continuing, just making that uh, making that RSI just finally push all the way to the downside to correct before it can actually make the finalization of that corrective move to the upside. 
Okay, so what I am noticing, what I am noticing here is, is that we we could be looking at maybe a potential sideways trading to downside for the next session before a bounce to the upside. So let's go ahead and just grab a few um, a few time frames here so that we can gauge a better understanding of that. So we're gonna start with the immediate short term on the 30 minute. And uh, okay, so let's just expand this just a little bit to see. This is going to be the bi hourly, this is going to be a six hour, and this is going to be the daily. So we're just going to try to puzzle the pieces one by one so, so, to see if we can gauge that, that edge for tomorrow. Okay, for the new viewers, new listeners, this is the RSI profile. This is my diagram here for you guys. So you're looking at one, two, three, four zones. One, two, three, four. So you can be able to tag along with the, with the lingo. Okay, so that you don't get lost. Okay, so the immediate short term time frame is suggesting downside almost right away. Um, it is sitting well within the grips of the bearage of the bear strength percentile. Now the two hour, the buy hourly is suggesting a possible pivot to the upside, but the pivot is not convincing enough. And we are sitting in a comfortable level of the oversold area, which means that we could actually wait for the for the for the moving average to actually come down and we can use it yet again like this as a form of resistance to to continue to continue to the to the downside so if the buy hourly is giving us a corrective move but everything else is suggesting to the downside that that is more more along the lines of what i'm saying is potential potential up and down uh sideways trading for now um <clears throat> but let's continue let's just let's just see Okay, so the daily RSI is, oh man, it, it is, it is uh, reaching the deep areas of the bear weakness percentile, which usually means that we can be gravitated right into, right into bear strength. Okay, so within that, within that, it actually makes me, it actually makes me feel like it really wants to validate this support. It wants to make sure, or sentiment wants to make sure that this is a valid form of support before continuing on to the upside. And usually that fourth breakout is the true breakout, and this formation is actually a, a, a reversal of trend. This is, to, this is to show us that it is ready to make now a, a shift in, in the downside, to, actually to the upside, so it's a reversal. Okay, so this is a massive reversal, so it can take some time. Okay, now just for just for just for the hell of it, let's just look at the the buy daily. The buy daily is also suggesting downside. It is smack in the middle of the RSI, which means that it can actually potentially correct right away. But the downside pivot is pretty. Uh, I mean, it's significantly pivoted to the downside. We can't. We definitely can't ignore that. And the the three day is actually also pivoted towards the downside. Yeah, you guys, I. I uh, I'm not overly bearish on this for the fact that we are at a key support, okay? And this is a, this is a, this is likely an area of uh, inflection. So if we break this, if we break the support of a sixty-one oh eight, then we can see some downside. And what I mean by breaking the support is with any candle closure below this area, minimum four-hour candle. So if we close it below the sixty-one cent, which is which is below this essentially this demand zone, if we close a candle as much as a four hour closure on a closing basis, then we can see a continuation onto the downside and potentially touch our first demand zone. Somebody asked me in the discord what this other box was. And that's that box is essentially the first demand zone that we can actually use, which is confluent with the not 618 at 1412. I don't see this happening just yet though, because what we're, what we're confirming right now is pretty, it's pretty important. Okay, so CRTD is is bearish for the moment, but I am looking at a pretty strong opportunity at about the 61 cent uh, level. So between entry could be pretty good between 70 and 61. Please know I'm not a financial advisor. Take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as a form of entertainment. Okay, um, I can't ac actually suggest for you to buy or sell any assets. Okay, just do your own DD and we'll be fine. But the support range I'm looking at, once again, 61 cents to the two spot 618 at 70. So about a nine cent range for, for a potential entry for the aggressive traders. Okay, so this could be catching the catching the bottom support before a continuation onto the upside, which can be catching this bottom support here in demand enough to be able to ride all the way back up into our into our uh, supply zone right up here. So that lift could actually be a nice trade that can be a potential. Wow, 
Not bad. 172% move to the upside. Okay, so with that said, I think this is a pretty good place for me to leave off the video. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter, on Discord. I'll make sure to leave the links in the description below for you to consider joining the trading community in Discord. Uh, but with that said, I wish you well. I wish you a good night, and I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios.